Hi everyone, my name is Mahi and welcome back to Close Encounters, the podcast. Hi everyone, welcome, welcome, welcome back to Close Encounters. By now you obviously know who I am. I'm Mahi, hi, your host for the show. So let's get right into it. Our guest for today, well, there's not much to say about him, but I will try to say as much as I can. He has an expanding resume, you know, ranging from all kinds of high techie things, but predominantly public speaking, which is crazy because I love to talk and I love to hear other people talk. He's nurturing other human beings and himself through the art of public speaking all while he gets his degree in big data and marketing intelligence. It's a miracle I remembered all those big words but anyways to hear about that and more let's welcome our guest today David hello hello everyone and thank you so much Mahi for having me on this amazing amazing podcast I am super excited to be here and get this podcast started like I'm super excited to talk about public speaking and you know have fun Fun, yeah. We're gonna have fun. We're gonna talk about you know work, work, work. And we're gonna talk about you know fun stuff like what's up with you, what's up like that. So before we get started, how are you doing? What's what's do like what's up with you? What how's life? Life, I would say, is a bit hectic, but it's the weekend. I can never complain. I think after starting to work or during university, weekends are our getaway to just chillax relax become the mm-hmm. couch potatoes we all love to be so sundays are quite chill with the family so can't complain i just had lunch so it's amazing amazing fun love that so usually people tend to feel very lethargic after lunch as i do so myself but you know we soldier through it get through it exactly. <laughs> anyways so as I mentioned in your little introduction that you are currently getting your master's degree in big data and marketing intelligence. I'm going to be very honest with you. Mm-hmm. When I first heard about this, I literally had no idea what it meant. <laughs> um, yeah. And I was like, because I just knew there were a lot of things in tech, but I, this one was a mm-hmm doozy for my brain. Yeah, yeah. So if you had to explain what you do to a five-year-old, how would you explain it? Okay. So if I had explained this to a five-year-old, that's a very nice way to explain my degree. Let's see if I can quantify it. So to a five-year-old, if you have a set of Legos and it's completely empty, like it's completely scattered yeah. around, my job is to make sure that all the pieces are together so that at the end of it, we can make something pretty cool or like see something pretty cool out of it. So I take bits of data from across the internet or whatever database we're doing, making it into one nice presentation or one nice Excel sheet and tell everyone, guys, this is what I do. This is what the data is about. So that's that's a nutshell of what I do in big data. That was very easy to understand. I think you helped a lot of people out there to really wrap their heads around like 1% of some tech knowledge out there. Anyways, so it's quite interesting, you know, because a lot of people go mm. into tech mainly, you know, because of the the money. Of course. But yeah. It's not always anyone's first option because they're just like, okay, well, tech makes me good money. I'll mm. just go into it. I'll learn how to live with it later. But you want to go into it. Did you always sort of have like an inkling for learning about technology or were you interested in something completely different when you were a kid. What's what's the story behind hmm. that? What's the story behind that? That's a good question to ask, really. So, so for my master's, when I got on board, for my bachelor's, I did this international business management. For my high school AS and A-level, I was doing business, psychology, and English. This for A-levels. It's, oh it's anyone who does those will know that those are, that's the elite elite top tier like yeah top tier crazy i've never met someone who makes the same levels as me that's crazy anyway. it's amazing and i had so much fun i had so much fun with psychology and i thought you know what i'll become a psychologist you know find people ask them what their problem is read it but then i realized yeah. you know i'm good at 
A level psychology, but I'm not sure if I'm really good at actual university psychology. <laughs> so I took a break after high school, went on board mm. and worked for like a year, learned business sales. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? Something that's really good is international business. So you're going to use them. So COVID was there. You had a lot of time to learn something over and over again. And I was like, you know, international business is my forte. But for my master's, I was like, hmm, everyone does an MBA. Everyone gets a general business degree. What's different? What's unique? So I sat down with my professors and I asked them, what is growing? What is this option? What is nice? And they were like, you know, big data sounds cool. And I was just like, big data? What is that? So my professor, one of my professors gave that Lego analogy and I was just like, you know what, this is something really interesting and something I am really keen about. So big data is quite fun. Marketing intelligence is quite fun. Let's see what it's about. So that became what I wanted, why I jumped into big data. So do you ever get to work with like AI and all that fancy, ex a exciting lot. new things? Yeah. <laughs> a lot. So in my current company where I work at, I do manage a lot of data. And it's a lot of records. So my one of my key jobs is optimizing the data. How do you find the best results from the data? So whatever tools are available outside, AI tools or normal tools or tools like Tableau or Power BI or Excel. Excel is amazing. It's amazing. So creating data, finding it, form formatting it, that's the fun part I like doing a lot. So knowledge is just limited to like count if and sum and all that kind of exciting basic yeah. stuff that we do when you uh, yeah. To be honest, when I started this course, my knowledge was that literally. So one of my courses in university was big data and marketing intelligence. And we had to create a functioning dashboard with data analysis. And I was just like, how am I supposed to do that? So I sat with my professor who was incredibly patient with me to know what it is and YouTube. And I was like, okay, let's actually learn Excel basics from the get go to use this. So it really upskilled my basic Excel knowledge over here. Do you ever go through periods like when you first started where you're like, I, I just kind of bored. This is where you're kind of on the cusp of like questioning whether you actually want to do this or you're just like, this is, it gets after a point, it gets too tedious for me. I think. For us, I think just as Gen Z as well, we really look at what's interesting and what's something that keeps us going over and over again. And the moment something becomes mono, we're just like, what are we doing? Literally, what are we doing? It's the same old routine. Like, am I speaking yeah. the same thing? Am I writing the same thing? So uh, there are certain points where it does go like that. For me, it's usually when I'm collecting the data, like when I'm manually extracting all the data and I'm just like, what is this? What am I doing? What am I going to go through over here? But at the end of the day, when my team or my universe, when I get some of my paper, right, they are very happy with it and the results actually match and actually helps them, then it becomes worth it. But like sometimes in between, it just becomes like, what am I doing? There is so much data over here. What am I doing with it? Does it, does it work a lot? you to be like creative in any way? Yes, completely. Uh, so I... At work also, I do student engagement, basically refer and earn. And one thing my uh, boss tells me is you have full control over what you want to do with this program. Completely. It's your baby. Do whatever you want with it. And I started working here in February. So that was a big shakeup. Like, I didn't really know what changes can I make. But the company here promotes flexibility and innovation. And that's something... I think us a Gen Z want that innovation, that creativity, like, you know, you're not stuck to a certain routine that you have to go A, B, C. You can go A, D, F and all that. So I do get privileges to be flexible with my work and whatever so you, helps the yeah. business. Gets it. So do you use any like Gen Z tactics to get their attention? I mean, there's a lot of stuff to choose from when it comes to like getting their attention. So one of the funny things is, is that I'm one of the younger people in my office, like probably the youngest person over there, like the one Gen Z over there. So, or like the second Gen Z. 
So for our social media, for whatever I do for the program, right, caters to the Gen Z because we're mostly targeting school children and our university students. So a lot of our conversations, our social media posts, or even our reels that we make are very Gen Z catered with every pop culture reference that is relevant in that six second or like that 10 second window. I mean, now the things that are trending is that one second reel. I just keep doing random posts about it. So I think it's the lack of content. attention. Don't you think that kind of ruins a lot of, that ruins the YouTube, ruins YouTube? Because a lot of cre- creators make 10 to 15 minute videos and our attention span is three minutes. Like at max on a good day, it's three minutes. Yeah, so, I think it's all about that attention economy and whatever. Like I learned about it in in uni, but it's like your mm-hmm. attention is money, and uh, given that basically half our brains are like not functioning as it should, it's I think the mm-hmm. one second limit being justified. No, I completely agree because imagine now you I saw this I saw this trend on TikTok where you know people have parts of the movie on TikTok, so like parts of a TV show or a movie on TikTok, it's like cut into parts. And I'm just mm-hmm. like, I don't think that's supposed to happen. Like, you're not, you're supposed to watch the full movie. You're not supposed to watch part one, part two, part three. Like I finished Grey's Anatomy on TikTok. Imagine 20 seasons of Grey's Anatomy oh, on TikTok. No How could you? No, actually. Actually, th- there are dedicated fan accounts on Grey's Anatomy, which will show snippets of episodes and you have to find part three, part four, part five. And I'm just like, that is unique, but like, that's such a waste of good TV. It is. Speaking of Grey's Anatomy, do you have a favorite character? Uh, I like Mark, Mark Sloan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he was funny, R. but R. then he died. <laughs> then I liked Lexi, but then she also R. died. R. <laughs> so, uh, you like all I the Meredith Deku. was funny. Yeah. Yeah, I mean they were fun, but like Derek was also okay, Derek's also oh, alright. <laughs> okay, okay, there are a lot of characters I liked who were uh, uh, R.I.P. And then there were the siblings as well. There were two siblings who were the Italian siblings. Uh, yeah, but one of them R.I.P. as well. Yeah, one of them R.I.P. as well. So I think there are four and four, four and four R.I.P. So let me ask you something, and like. You're still in uni, by the way. You're getting your master's. Right? Yeah. You can be like completely honest. Because sometimes okay. we all have those days where you're just like loaded with like uni work and you're so overstimulated mm-hmm. and you're on the verge of like a mental breakdown. You're just like holding it together. And then you mm-hmm. get assignments and you're like, should I take the easy way out? And should I just like completely give up or take the easy way out? The easy way, obviously, being, you know, using. GPT for you know. So yeah. have you have you ever done that in any of your like have you considered doing it at least? I I don't think I've ever come to a point where I wanted to use ChatGPT. But to answer that question over there, you're talking about burnout, like there are severe points of burnout I've had, especially when I started my masters. To be very honest, because so I graduated bachelor's in 2023, like in March. So, but I was already working by that time. So from January to December, I just had work. You were just working. There's no academic pressure or anything like that. And I've been working and studying since, since I started year one. So you're always under that mindscape of, oh my God, you have to work, study, work, study, work, study, work, study. But when I had that one year of just like working, I used to come home after work, uh, relax and not really worry about an assignment or anything like that, right? So your mind just takes it easy. But when I start my master's and the coursework is actually so much more than bachelor's, I used to have points where I was just like, what am I doing? Why did I do this? I really should just choose one or the other. I shouldn't, uh, I don't need like to put myself, exert myself so much out of there. Like, why am I killing myself? Like, sorry, uh, disclaimer, over this on and on again. Uh, but I don't think cheating or using ChatGPT for my assignments came to think because one thing that I really believe, I really have strong values is that I want to do well and the only person who's going to hold you accountable is yourself. Like, will you be satisfied with going, taking that easy shortcut over there and just like submitting a paper like that? And plus I have like 
Chat GPT is kind of stupid when it comes to assignments. Like sometimes it's really good, other times it's just super dumb and like yeah, it's just I don't know. If you say like oh you're wrong, you're like oh yes I'm wrong. But if you like say you're right, and then it's like oh yeah I'm right. You can just like manipulate it any way you want. It's kind of like gullible child to say what you want. Yeah. Chat GPT was fun, or like people may have used it when it just launched because it was a new technology. It was amazing, but it's 2024. There's AI detectors everywhere. So. The weird thing is, I'm not very reliant on like you know ChatGPT or whatever. I use it if mm. I need something that I cannot find. But yeah, I I do like my assignments mostly without it. One time, I submitted my assignment entirely by myself, no ChatGPT whatsoever. It mm. detected so much like nonsense. It's like, oh, you use AI here. You use all this information here, and it was like a full stop or a comma or something like that. And this is like, oh, this is AI. Do you do you know how annoying those sometimes those Twitter is like they'll detect and or yeah, or a full stop and exactly. you're just like what am I supposed to do with that like how what am I supposed to replace and with yeah, <laughs> or and or so, with and these are like my words like I put my heart and soul into these words and it's like oh you've used like AI well, let's talk a little bit about your public speaking okay because for me when I you know when you first introduced yourself to me I think your public mm. speaking was like your USP and I was like that. Because I'm like going through your Instagram, I'm like, interesting new person. Let's see what they're up to. You post a lot of like, I want to say, uh, honestly, I'm trying to like think of the best way to put it. You have like a lot of mini side hustles going on, where you're just like, yeah. In the weekends, I go here or I do that. I'm just like, whatever. So, let's see. You're a post. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and I learned something new. That day, when I looked up what it was, I thought it had something to do with chess, and I was gonna ask you about chess, but then I'm like, never mind. Wow. And then okay. you're also a part of a, a gavels club. That's also again, I learned something new. So it's all about public speaking for you. And what what is it about public speaking? You're just like, I love talking. What is it about it? Have you brought that up? Okay. So yeah. That's the first time someone says like my USP is public speaking. So kind of is at this point. I realized like four years in, like I realized public speaking is my USP. So public speaking it started in 2020 during COVID, literally during my gap year when the whole world went into shutdown, complete and utter shutdown. I didn't know what to do. Like genuinely speaking, I was lost because I wanted to go to India to do my law exam, but it just kept getting pushed. The examination kept getting pushed because India was going through a horrible case of COVID, and it was very unfortunate that people were getting there. Were so many hospitals being filled. Everything bad happening was times ten in India because of population, anything like that. So my law exam got postponed indefinitely, and I was like, "Damn, I don't have no plan." So I decided, you know what? Everyone's doing something, but let's do a podcast. Back then, in twenty twenty, there really wasn't anything. Podcasty like over there, especially on Zoom. So I said, you know what? I like speaking, but I like interviewing people also or sharing people their story. So I had a podcast titled We Impact. So I brought along youth from across the world. So we had people from South Africa, Algeria, Morocco, UK, anyone who can share their story, come on board my podcast. And it just happened. So one episode happened. I watch it back. The worst episode I've recorded. I was stuttering, using um, ah, e, ah, all that filler words. But as it went on, I realized, you know, this is something of interest. I like speaking. I like speaking to people as well. So when I joined uni, they had something called a Toastmaster Club, and I was like, "What is a Toastmaster?" You thought it was chess. I thought it's people who has something to do with toast. Yeah. Like literally, yeah. I they thought so. Too. I was like. Yes, you become a master of toast. I was like, that's, and my mom was the one who used to push me for it. Go join a Toastmaster Club. Do go join a Toastmaster Club, and I joined uni, and they had a Toastmaster Club. And my friends over there, who were all seniors, said, "You can go on stage and speak, and people will applaud you no matter what." And I was like, really, really. So I went on stage, and I realized I really like it. And then it just went on like that. One speech led to another speech, another speech, and I was like, "This is actually kind of fun. It's quite interesting." So for three years, I was just 
trying to be a, the best speaker in the world. And I didn't I realize that, you know, every year I realized there's someone better than me, someone better, someone better, someone better. Until year before last where I competed. And then I went to the world championship. I was like, damn, that's so much fun. I lost, in the, I lost in the semifinals. That was sad. And I was so de- super depressed. But then it just came like, I learned so much. Why don't I just teach someone else about public speaking? And then that's how the Gavels Club came to be. So in our university, we had a speaking club for children who don't really get, like, I, my aim was, along with my co-mentor and the faculty, was give an opportunity to kids who don't, would not usually get the opportunity in school so that they can, they can get leadership opportunities, networking, growth opportunities in the Gavels Club. That's what we wanted to do. So we did that. And for two years, it's been going quite well. So we transitioned to a mentor and speaking role. So that's how it started, really. The whole speaking journey and Gavels and Toastmasters. So you're kind of like uh, Mr. Miyagi from Karate Kid. You're like a mentor for I'm so happy someone got that reference. Like someone like gets uh, knows a Karate Kid reference or Mr. Miyagi. Is it because of Cobra Kai or is it because of the Karate Kid? Um, I have been there. I have been around since like the movies. It's not from Cobra. Kai. I haven't even watched Cobra Kai. Yeah. Same, same. OG, OG. Yeah. yeah. It's I'm all about the yeah, Jackie Chan and then the Rock. You said in your Toastmasters Club that. You go up on stage, you talk about anything, and people will applaud you. Now, you can use that to your advantage in so many ways, especially if you just love to constantly talk about anything and everything. Mm. So aside from, you know, all the stuff we've spoken about so far, if you could go up there and talk about any topic, no judgment whatsoever, because you know you're going to receive the applause, what is one topic mm. you can like, go on and on and then switch to, like, a different one, you know? You're just like, what are some topics you can just go like, on and on? Okay, so I'm a big movie buff. I love movies, so I can talk to you about... Yeah, I can talk to you about any era of movies because my mom was such a... Mom and dad both are really huge, huge movie buff. Like, they don't they don't traditionally just send me to watch, you know, age-appropriate movies. Like, oh my God, you have to watch a G-rated movie only. And you have to watch only a 2010 movie. Like, for example... You, if I was how old? Maybe if I was six or seven or ten, they wouldn't only let me watch Inside Out, Moana, or Frozen. They'll let me watch mm-hmm. other movies also, just to you know diversify my yeah. palette of movies. So movies is one thing I love, absolutely love talking about. I love music, so you can talk to me about different kinds of music, etc. Uh, stand-up comedy is another funny thing I love talking about. I love making. I like to make people laugh a lot so one of my things in Toastmasters I do or I've been recognized was comedy because mm-hmm. the first speech the competitive speech I wrote uh, you're from India right so you know what Karela is you know what Karela is yeah of course so I gave a seven minute speech on Karela and that took me to the semifinals of our division contest. And everyone, and everyone was asked, referred to me for that one year. You're the Karela guy, right? You're the Karela guy, right? You're the Karela guy. And I was like, guys, you know, I gave an inspiring speech about my parents and my career and like my journey as well. But everyone just referred to me as Karela. Consequences of your actions, I guess. So what would your top four movies be? Since you're such a sin Top or, yeah, wow, it's top four. Very okay, good. all right. Comedy, comedy. One of the best comedy movies. It's controversial. I don't know if everyone liked it. Is Tropic Thunder? Oof. Tropic Thunder is is by far one of the funniest movies. But it's a movie that will never be shown yeah. in twenty twenty four. It will. It ever. will. It will get canceled in a second. <laughs> so Trop- Tropic Thunder is one. Uh, are we including Bollywood as well? Yeah, literally. English, Spanish, French, anything. It's really up to you. Okay. So, uh, Tropic Thunder is one. I absolutely love... Oh, yeah. Number one for me, I'm going to say number one is Rocky. The oh. Rocky series. 
that is one series I can watch on repeat. So Rocky one to six, I guess, is number one. Uh, I would say number two is uh, Andaz up the the, Shah, the Amir Khan and Salman Khan movie. Yeah. That is number two in terms of comedy for me. Elite and number three is uh, Mamma Mia. Mamma Mia. Is like, what about you? Sorry. Well, oh, what about what's your <laughs> for? Oh my. Okay. Wow. That's a lot of. That's a lot of pressure. Exactly. Avoided, it's a yeah. it's a conversation. It's a I, conversation. I have <laughs> I have been waiting until I get invited to like a red carpet and I see letterbox and it's like it gave us your top four. Hopefully I would have been more prepared, but okay, I'm gonna give it's gonna be like a very disoriented list. Okay. Okay. Uh white chip for sure. Uh white okay. comedy. That's, that's like classic comedy. I always change between Rush Hour 2 and 3, but I'm going to say Rush Hour 3. Okay. And then Interstellar. I know it's a really Interstellar movie. as a... Okay, yeah. Okay, it's, it's a good movie, yeah. Interstellar, and then it will change your life. That it's is... based on a real story. It, it nominated for an Oscar and everything. They were wrong, but that's a whole different thing. You have to watch it. That is... Yeah. Though I can, like, relate to three of them, like... Rush Hour series is childhood. Like, on repeat, you watch it. White Chicks. That was such a unique movie. You know that 2000s era of movies? Yeah. You know those 2000s, like, Click, Rush Hour. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah, Rush Hour was 2000s. Uh, White Chicks. Then there was that, uh, what's that, Happy Gilmore and all those, Adam Sandler. I, I, I want to add a number five Adam Sandler mention. Like, I love all his movies. Yeah. <laughs> it is... <laughs> So it was just all I, his I entire that. filmography of like Adam Sandler. You know, the one movie I would say was is really close to home and which my brother and I loved the most because we annoyed our aunt so much about it was Grown Ups. Like I'm waiting for Grown Ups. Like, where is the Grown Ups mention? It has to be. Okay, there. so imagine, imagine my aunt like she's from that generation, like like really old generation of that, like not too old, but that. Let's say 80s is, 80s to 70s was a good time yeah, for her yeah. peak cinema. Imagine watching a movie like Grown Ups. Imagine. <laughs> like, she hated that movie so much. Like, what is, what are they watching? What, what are the kids watching? So, my brother and I, even though we saw the movie once, we saw it twice, we used to watch it on repeat just to annoy my aunt. <laughs> <laughs> just to annoy my aunt. Yeah, Adam Sandler movies were so nice. It's just family friendly movies. Yeah, so what about like the hangover movies? I feel like that falls sort of like in the same song. See, hangover movies is uh like being very honest, it's like a dream for every group of guys to just go on their mm-hmm. like bachelor trip to go to experience like once in your life. So yeah, hangover movies like one and two one and two were actually good. Three became so serious, I don't know why. Like, the jokes were funny, but it just became, like, you know, a whole chase. Oh, my God, we need to explore money. I was like, bro, it was a bachelor trip. They went to get married. <laughs> they went to Vegas, wrong. and then they went to... Something always Yeah, wrong. so... Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Uh, yeah, that... hangover is definitely there. Yeah, there's so many people. That brings me to uh, my final question. Ooh. We tend to get, like, really blindsided by a lot of people's success. Thanks to you. Thanks to you. Mm. that's how I I know a lot about you know public speaking and all your exciting ventures in life so mm. everyone always shows like the good parts no one ever wants to talk about the terrible parts the hard shit stuff like that so I want to ask you what it tell me something like a, what was like a, a moment of like failure for you or what was something is something that you're like kind of just like silently speaking with but it's like nobody ever wants to talk about stuff like that so you just cannot have an open about it. Okay, that's actually a good question. It's actually something relevant, very, very relevant to, let's say, our generation or even the generation prior, or even the future one. I feel bad for the future one because they're going to be engrossed only in social media and uh, see every they, TikToker's... They need a lot more schooling than we did, for sure. Their vocabulary, terrible. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Agree with that. But, no... What I struggle with, okay, you know, I would just say this, behind every Instagram post or everything like that, there are like 10, like out of every 10 Instagram posts, the one you post, there are nine horrible ones you delete, right? So I think I had a case of imposter syndrome, really. 
So anytime I got something good happen to me, I was used to be like, do I actually deserve this? Am I actually taking somebody else's spot? Like, what am I doing? Am I actually worthy of this? I think that happens a lot. And you'd never really enjoy the victories as much as you should. And those are really good things to do. Like winning a competition or getting an opportunity, getting an internship. You should be like, yeah, yeah, I should be happy. But at the back of my mind, I'm just like, do I really deserve this? Am I really going to achieve something with this? Am I going to let people down? Do I have the skills? That being very hypercritical of myself was something that I used to really, really struggle with. Being very hypercritical. But another thing which a lot of people don't realize is, or something about my speaking. I think the best in speaking. For every time I won, right? So when I told you, like, you know, I found someone better than me. So I used to go to the peak. I used to go to the peak. And then I used to just come crashing down again. Peak for like two years in a row. For two years when I started, I thought I was the best speaker. Oh my God, I can do everything. Went to the competition, got knocked out in the first round. I was like, damn. Second year, I improved. I'm so much better. I didn't even make it. I made it in out of three categories. I participated and made it in one. Other people are better. Even the best one. I went all the way up. Thought, you know, this is my year. I did it for the first time. There were so many people better than me. I just was like, damn. You get tired. You lose motivation. Yeah. Why, why do you want to do things over and over again if you're not going to succeed? Right? Think that thing you can also agree as like a Gen Z generation. If you don't succeed the first time, you, it's the easiest answer is just, I'm not good at it. I'll not do it again. Yeah, I feel like it's also because you're just like so exhausted after a while. It's just like even trying to take the phone with your energy. I see, like, okay, I'm good at speaking and all that stuff. And then suddenly I look online, I see someone who is maybe four or five years younger than me win the world champion. And I was just like, yeah. what's the thing? And then you look at people around you. Like, I think this is most prominent during my gap year and especially mm-hmm. during COVID. All of my friends went to university and I was just like, in COVID, I was like, where is the university life going to be and all that stuff? I think feeling left behind is what we fear the most. It was yeah. like a whole like FOMA situation, the fear of missing out on things and like meeting people. Yeah. But I mean, that's crazy. I think. I think it's more because of the Olympics as well, because there are many, there's like a 13 year old or 14 year old who competed. <laughs> it was just like, I mean, I, okay. The funniest thing is in the Euros, right? If, if you watch football, yeah, Spain yeah, yeah. on the Euros, right? So, y- Yamal, right? Let me Yamal. Yeah. Oh, My guy is 17. He, he's 14. Oh, wait, yeah. He's 17. 17. Yeah. He has his school exams to worry about, and he's gone to the Euros final and gave a. 10 on 10 performance and we're he looking at his my exam. friends and I yeah he gave his exams and he ended up passing his exam. and you're just like what <laughs> so stuff like that social media in that regard is a horrible horrible thing like you're supposed to be like oh my god wow that's amazing that person is so young and doing so many things mm-hmm. instead you're like what am I doing with my life what am I doing over here <laughs> I'm really so, crying out like here, that. but okay. What kind of situation? All right. So we're going to wrap things up with a very exciting little game. Yeah, just don't think too much. I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. Don't think too much. Right. Okay. If you could have an alter ego, who would that be? Deadpool. Oh my Deadpool God. Deadpool would be funny. So real. Dude. Amazing answer. You're already doing That was instant. Great. Right. If you have to pick a different career for yourself, no judgment whatsoever, like a no judgment zone type, to be as weird as you want it to be, what would that career be? I would want to be someone who would be a zookeeper. I love animals. I would be a zookeeper. Oh. Is, that, what, is there any specific animal you'd like cater to? Because I do a panda. Dolphins. 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 I love dolphins so much. They're my favorite animal. Um, so cute. All right. Okay, so if you were in a Freaky Friday situation and you switched bodies and lives with someone, who would that person be? Gordon Ramsay. Wow, that's that's not diversity in your answers. Can I ask why? Because I, I just have to. 
Kenya. You know, the thing is, Gordon Ramsay has a lot of places he goes and tries new food, and he has a series called Hell's Kitchen where he mm-hmm. renovates the whole place and he gets a lot of nice food and bad food, but then again, you get to try new things. And he goes around the country with his Italian buddy. I forgot Zeno. his name, but he Zeno. made that. Yeah. Zeno. Yeah, yeah. So he went around the country just trying to new food and trying stuff like that. So I think that's an amazing time. I want to do that. And you have money, so you can do that, right? And, and you like, get oh, more good money chef. doing the whole thing. Yeah. You like get that. paid to eat food. Bro, you get paid to eat food. I want that life. <laughs> so I, I feel more, it's more because of, you know, like the whole idiot sandwich situation. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> you, you Bro, can if make food. Gordon Rams- no, if Gordon Ramsay said that in 2024, he'd get cancelled. Imagine calling someone an idiot sandwich and they'd be like, no, I have to complain to HR. I'm th- I can't- he called me an idiot sandwich. Okay. All right, last question. Now this might involve some thinking. Picture this. If you were the president, what is mm. one rule you would put into action almost like immediately? Oh my God. If I was the president, what rule would I put in immediately? Uh, okay. okay, this is okay. This I'll give two answers. The one immediate one, which is for world peace, there has to be one day where everyone has to be nice to one another and can't say anything bad. Like mm-hmm. they have to compliment each other throughout the whole day. Yeah. Like if it works, it's like a reverse purge where everyone in the purge, you know what happens. But oh in this, God. it's a nicer version. Yeah, here it's a nicer version. So everyone compliment and be kind to one another. And number two. I would say it's, uh, I don't know, you get free ice cream or something like that, man. I mean, it's not that, like, I don't know what radical change we can do as a thing. Like, uh, one thing, so everyone just gives out free like, ice cream for everyone. Are you for, like, the aggressive complimenting people? Like, oh, my God, I hope you have the best day of your life. You know, where people just get oh, so, gosh. like, pissed at each other, they start complimenting each other. But, like, it's, like you don't expect the no, you have to be you have to be genuine. Like, I'll make sure that they have to be genuine. Like, do something nice, guys. Like, be kind to one another for once. It's, there's too much hate and violence everywhere. Just be nice to one another. It's not that hard. <laughs> yeah, that brings us to the end of our episode. Before we end, is there anything you'd like to say? Look into your camera and just say it. Whatever you want. Okay, first thing is the usual. Thank you so much for having me. I had an amazing time. It was so much fun. Like, I enjoyed this a lot. I generally thought this was going to be a very serious podcast about oh, my God. career, dissecting how do I do this, how do I do that. But it was actually a lot of fun. And we got to discuss a lot of nice movies. It was amazing. So it's a good thing. Both of us and of us, amazing. Uh, number two, to anyone who's watching over there, like we both talked a lot about Gen Z and social media and like the imposter syndrome, all that stuff. It's okay, guys. It's not that hard. It's not that deep. You guys will take a good amount of time to get where you need to be. So don't rush anything and don't be too sad if you miss it. So, because there's always something better for you, regardless. So I think that's a nice, fun, and deep way to end the conversation. Thank you all so much for watching. You made it till the end. Do some help for you. And if you want to do me in, because of course you do. You can just look at the information, the screen, here, there, anywhere, wherever it is. And thank you for watching once again, and I will see you in the next episode. Peace out. Bye.